All right, uh, example 3.9. Uh, so let's build upon the script. Uh, we wrote, for example, 2.4 on page 37. Recall you wrote a script to calculate the vapor pressure PSAT of ethanol for a given T, uh, where uh, here we're given these Antoine constants. Uh, and the Antoine equation is valid over this range. Uh, temperatures in degrees C and pressures in millimeters of mercury. And so what we'd like to do now is calculate the vapor pressure over the temperature range 0 to 100 degrees C and plot it. Okay. And when we plot it, we want to construct what's called a clap around plot where we plot log P, either log base 10 or natural log, versus inverse T, uh, where the note is when we compute inverse T that we need to use absolute temperature units uh, in, in this part. Uh, so we would need T and Kelvin um, to calculate uh, the inverse T. Uh, portion of it. Okay, um, so we're going to evaluate Antoine or vapor pressure using Antoine equation from zero to one hundred degrees C um, using our, our previous code and, and plot the results. Okay, and so I'm going to go over to MATLAB, and the first thing I did is I downloaded my M file from example um, three or two four, uh, and this is exactly what I had. And so this is our script from two four uh, from the screencast version that I downloaded. Um, and so our Antoine constants are predefined. Uh, calculate log uh, P. So this is just our Antoine equation. So temperature is in degree C. So log P would be in millimeters of mercury, uh, which is fine. Uh, and then in that case, I converted the temperature, uh, and that was it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by saving a copy of this. Okay, and let me call this maybe Antoine P plot ethanol. Okay. And I'm going to start by building off of that, and I spelled plot wrong, but that's okay, PLT. I want to start by building off of that code, right? And the reason being is I know that that code worked. For a given temperature, it would calculate vapor pressure, and then we already made sure it was bug-free and that it worked correctly. So I'm just going to literally take that and build upon it, okay? So uh, how I'm going to build upon it is, okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to have it so I just have the constants in there and then our log p calculation. Okay, so this is log base 10. Okay, and I'll remind myself that's log base 10. Okay, and so what we want to do now is loop over temperatures from 0 to 100 uh, C. Okay, and so I'll do that is let's just do 4 uh, i is equal to 0 to 100. Okay, so we'll set up a for loop. So uh, we'll start looping from 0 up to 100, and each increment, I will get incremented by a value of 0. Okay. Okay. Then what I'd like to do is each iteration, I want to use i as t. Okay. Um, and so I could just use i. Um, that's fine. Okay. Or if I wanted to, I could even call it t underscore c, and then I don't even have to modify uh, my equation at all. Right. So I could use i. And I could uh, store the result of i to t underscore c. I could update, update my loop, inter, uh, loop index variable uh, here. Um, all would be fine and, and correct. Okay. And so if I were just to end this, then what would happen is I'm going to loop for a uh, temperature from 0 to 100 degrees c. Okay. So first iteration, t underscore c is 0. Calculate log p. Okay. Get to my end. Come back up since uh, 0 is less than the upper bound of 100. Right, and I keep repeating until uh, t underscore c is 100 when I get to this end. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, so what, I wanted, what do I want to do each iteration? What I'd like to do each iteration is plot log p versus inverse t. Okay, then the note was when we compute um, inverse t that we need to use absolute temperature units. Okay, so let's um, compute 1 over t where t is in k. All right, we need to use absolute units. Okay, So our looping uh, temperature is in degrees C. So this will be, um, call it t inverse is equal to 1 divided by t underscore c plus 273.15. Right. If you want to do that in two steps, you're more than welcome to do it in two steps. Okay. And then we want to set up our clap around plot so each iteration, I'll need to plot. Uh, my x variable will be my inverse temperature. And then my y variable will be log p. Okay. 
All right. Last step before I start to uh, test to make sure this is running and do what I, doing what I want is when I repeatedly call the plot command like this, every time I call plot, by default, MATLAB's going to erase all the data sets that are already plotted on uh, my plot. And so what I need to do is to override that default behavior is I need to uh, change the settings for hold, right? So I need to uh, you know, turn hold on, um, so hold on, <laughs> so via the command hold on. And so what hold on will tell MATLAB is that every time I plot a new data point, keep what's already there. Okay? All right. Um, let me, for completeness, update this. So we're going to um, calculate vapor pressure of ethanol using Antoine equation and construct a uh, Clapeyron plot. So precondition. Uh, in this version, none. Post condition, uh, actually, will just be a, a plot. Okay, plot of vapor pressure. Okay, cool. Okay, let me save it, and let's start by running this. Okay, before we uh, take the time to format our format our plot and make it look pretty, let's just make sure it works. Okay, so if I run it, uh oh, the screen's blank. Uh, what did I do? Okay, let's close it. Something's wrong. Okay, so here's my constants, just like I had before. I'm going to loop for uh, TC is 0 to 100. Here's my expression for log P. Okay, that's fine. T inverse. Oh, uh, so what's going on is, uh, remember by default, with plot, it's going to plot... Uh, each data point is a tiny little dot. <laughs> the issue is, is when I plot that tiny little dot, I can't see it. So let's tell MATLAB instead of using dots, uh, let's use circles. Okay. So if I run it, bam, I have a clap around plot. Okay. Cool. All right. It looks pretty straight. Uh, things are looking good. So now the plot's working. Let's build our code up from there. Okay. And again, um, you know, the reason it didn't work before is when I don't specify a format, MATLAB by default is going to take each data point and plot it as a tiny little dot, uh, so tiny uh, that I can't even see it. Okay, and so all I did is K circle or K zero or K O uh, would tell MATLAB to plot each data point as a black circle. Okay, so how I want to build this up is let's start by first labeling our axes. Okay. So if I want to label our axes, so if I start with our x-axis, the command is x-label. Okay. Actually, maybe let me shrink this. Uh, I take that back. It's kind of uh, hard with my uh, webcam here. Okay. Okay. But um, let me bring the plot up. That way we can make our little changes and we can check them one at a time. Since I'm going to keep running it, I'm going to clear the figure uh, every time I recall the script, uh, and then it'll, it'll go about its business again. Okay? All right, so, and that's just so we can check this one step at a time. So if I want to add an x axis label, the command is x label, followed by a string. Well, here my x axis is 1 over t, um, uh, and that will have units of 1 over Kelvin. Another quote to close up my string. Parentheses to close up the command. Okay. So if I were to run this, right, plot's the same, but now I have an x axis, x -axis label. Y label. So here this will be uh, log um, p, and then uh, p will be in units of millimeters of mercury. Okay. So this is. You know, you could label the axis any way you want, uh, but in theory, when you have the log of something, that argument uh, should in theory be dimensionless. So the way I would report it is it's log p divided by uh, millimeters of mercury, the units, uh, to make that a dimensionless quantity. Okay. All right, we're just interested in plotting it, so uh, don't worry about that if, if that's not clear to you. Okay, cool. If I want to add a title, okay, title is title. 
Okay, and this could be uh, clapeyron uh, plot for ethanol from zero to uh, 100. And if I do the caret um, circle, hopefully that gives this should give me a, a superscript a circle C. Okay. Let's see. So titles clapeyron plot for ethanol from zero to 100 C. Right. If you don't know this formatting, perfectly fine. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, now, uh, very last, uh, things that are useful to do are, would be to save your figure. Okay. And we'll talk about saving and printing your figure, and we'll compare the two. Okay. So this would be format axis. I can type it. Yeah. Okay. So next, let's save our fig. Okay. So save fig would be the command. Okay. And I just need to give it a name. So let's call this um, ethanol clap. Okay. If I close it and rerun it, okay. So I'm looking at my current folder to see the files that are saved there. Okay. Uh, Let me make this a little bigger so you can see them. Okay, I now have an ethanol clap uh, dot fig. Okay, and what a dot fig file is, is it's a MATLAB figure file. Okay, and you know, what I can do with that is if I close figure one, and I come over here and say just double click on uh, fig, right? It opens up my figure window, which I could then continue to go and, and edit and manipulate and do whatever I want with. Okay. Right, and I should mention, remember with a script, it's essentially as if you're opening it up, running each line line by line. So you can go ahead and you could tweak the figure or plot additional data right here in my command window. Okay. But that's a fig. So a fig is nice. So if I'm writing a lab report for unit ops, a fig might not necessarily be all that useful because I can't, you know, say add that to a MS Word document or necessarily say turn that into a professor for grading uh, unless they, you know, know in like MATLAB, of course. Uh, but the other thing I could do is I can print. Okay, so let's save and print. Save and print figure. And so to print a figure is the same as saving it to file. Okay, and that's just the name print. Okay, and so the order doesn't matter. But first you need to specify the file format. Okay, so dash D, there's dash D, PNG. I use a lot in the text. Uh, PNG would be a file format that um, I think Microsoft Word likes. Um, I'll use uh, EPS. Uh, so EPSC, make sure the make sure the colors are right. It's an encapsulated postscript, uh, followed by the name. And so if I just type ethanol clap again, okay, uh, I can do uh, that. Save it. Um, now if I run it, okay, it's taking a second to to render my graphic. Okay, now I have this ethanolclap.eps. Okay, so notice here in the name, you don't need to type .eps, you can, uh, but if you don't, MATLAB will assume that it's by default that file format. Okay, and so if I click to open it outside of MATLAB, it'll open it in my default uh, viewer for EPSs. Okay, and notice in my viewer the um, uh, degree Celsius got a little goofed up, uh, but rather than tweak it, you know, that's what it would be. If I want to make it a PNG, say to add to lab report, just change that to PNG, rerun it, and now I have a image. All right, cool. And PNG, apparently that's that's not an issue. But then this would be something I could go find in this directory and directly add to lab report. All right, see here it even gives me a a, a preview. Okay, cool. Okay. You can turn me off if you want to, but if you want to get really nerdy, <laughs> uh, as a post condition, you could have, say, plot of vapor pressure uh, stored to, okay, and you can even define the name, ethanol clap, okay. And if you, you know, wanted to, um, well, actually, let me, let me, let me really nerd it up. So if precondition could be. Um, name, okay, and this will be a string containing a name of figure file, 
and then post condition will be plot of vapor pressure stored to name. Okay, so I don't talk about uh, strings a lot, but uh, let's let's play with this. So what I could do is name could be a variable, and I could store to name uh, anything. So maybe I want this to be called um, ethanol test. Okay, so now you know I type a name. All right, what's assigned to name is a string ethanol test. Okay, so whenever MATLAB sees name, it replaces it with the string ethanol test. So I'll come over here to my script, and here, remember, save fig had this, you know, this single argument, which was a string that I want to save it to. I could just replace those strings with name. <laughs> so now if I run it, all right, everything looks to be the same as before. Uh, and now, uh, ethanol test, right, I've got a figure file, so let me close it, okay, so I've got a figure file, I can go ahead and open up, okay, and likewise I have my PNG, right, stored to ethanol test, all right, so you can even customize it, so the precondition could be the user specifies a name as a string, and you save everything uh, to that, all right, come on, that's pretty cool, isn't it, <laughs> uh, but that's uh, example, um, I don't remember the number, our Antoine example.